What's up, everyone? And what's up, Rocha? What up, Josh? How you doing, man? How am I doing? I'm not doing very well. I'm moon watching for the first time this year. The Bears had to lose to the Packers once again on primetime. Those damn cheeseheads. I hate Aaron Rodgers. Uh, we don't lose Aaron Rodgers around here, so I can't relate. Sorry. That's true. But hey, congratulations to your 49ers getting the first victory on the season, even though it came bittersweet, dude. Yeah, it sucks to lose Trey, man, but hey, you know what? We'd be all right. We got Jimmy G. That's true, man. Um, but hey, what a wild week in the NFL for week two. There was more crazy games, come from behind victories, an overtime. How about that Ravens and Dolphins game? God. Oh, two what? Silence the haters. What a game he had, man. Tua, he couldn't quit, man. He was too legit. He was too legit to quit. He just would not stop, Rocha. They were down three touchdowns, and Tua lit them up to come from behind and get the dub on the road. That was legit for real. And then how about the Cardinals and Raiders game? Bro, going to overtime... Dude, they had the same trajectory as the Niner game. The same score to the fourth quarter. And then the Raiders blew it. Josh Hudson Riffle, what are you doing? Yeah, Kyler Murray was incredible towards the end of that game. And then overtime, the defense made the play when Renfro copped it up. The Jets and Browns game. That game was dead to water. The Browns were up with like 155 up to go. 30 to 17. And then Joe Flacco comes back and rallies a victory. Listen, I'm sorry, but how do you let Joe Flacco score, what, 14 points in a minute 30 to beat you, Josh? Listen, it's crazy, dude. Eight games this past week were decided by six points or less. Half the games. Dude, this is why we love the NFL, Josh. You never know what's going to happen, man. It's must-watch television right now. You can't miss a thing. You don't know what's going to happen. But uh, because of that, my Mm -hmm. pick-em has been suffering this year. Even though it did get better from week one, mm-hmm. I went nine and seven this week. Yeah, I, I also went nine and seven compared to seven and nine last week. So, yeah, a little bit better. But next week, I will get better. I'm going to get into the double digits, Roach. You mark my words. Uh, it's going to happen. What, are you going to go undefeated? You know what? Yes, I'm going to go undefeated next week. And when I do, when it finally happens, Rocha, mm-hmm. I want I want balloons and confetti to fall from the sky. I want to be hoisted onto the shoulders of people and celebrated like a Wait. god. I want I want beautiful women to fan me for the rest of the Pick'em video and feed me grapes. Um. Well, we can't hoist you, so I don't know if that can happen. Uh, we'll work something out. Okay. But you want to shout out the people who did well in our Pick'em group? Let's do it, man. All right. Sure. Right now, we're going to shout out the top 10 performers from week number two. Here you go. Number one was Zorquez with 13 picks correct. Eagles fan for life, 1996 with 13 picks. X-Boy, 64. Is that, is that your OnlyFans account name? With 13 picks correct. And then Mixin Hands with Women with 12 picks correct. You're a legend. Take Me to a Prize with 12 picks. Huh. JPH420 with 12 Poon pick six with 12. (laughs) Kakuzi with 12 picks. Dominique's picks five. Dominique's picks five with 12. And then we have ESPN fan 52840047 with 12 picks correct. That's our top 10 from week two. Congratulations. You guys kicked ass. You guys, uh, congratulations. And uh, I'm going to beat you guys next week. Hey, now you want to shout out the top 10 performers overall on the season, Roach. Yes, sir. Go ahead. All right. So, overall, uh, leading is my ball, Zach Ertz. Love your name. Second is Xavier Osich. Sorry, I mispronounced that. You are in second place, my boy. Xboy64. No, that is not my OnlyFans account. Is in third place. Dominique Picks Fives uh, up next, followed by Disturb Media YouTube. And then we got Candyman number ones. He he. <laughs> yes, that's part of the name. He <laughs> he. <laughs> we got Zokers up next. And then <laughs> followed by Josh. ESPN 5 fan 5284004764. Five, 
Kakuzi, and then finally mixing hands with women. Congratulations, guys. You're our top 10 performers overall on the season. But as you heard me earlier, I'm coming back. I'm going to go perfect next week. It's going down. Roach, are you ready to talk some football? Oh, I'm always ready to talk football, baby. You guys watching, you ready to talk some football? All right. Well, everyone, hit that like button. If you're watching the live premiere, appreciate y'all watching. Hit that subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And let's get ready for the picks for week number three. Let's go, and we baby. start off, Rocha, on Thursday Night Football, where the Browns host the Pittsburgh Steelers. Both teams coming off of a loss. The Browns, we were mentioning them earlier. Yep. They had the game sewed up. They were up 30 to 17 with 155 left to go. Nick Chubb scored that last touchdown. Later on, he says he regretted scoring that touchdown. He wished he would have went down, run out the clock, take the victory. But he did score. Then Cade York misses the extra point. They get the ball back to the Jets, and Joe Flacco leads them to a touchdown. This was a 66-yard touchdown reception to Corey Davis. Corey Davis. They get an onside kick, and then Joe Flacco hits Garrett Wilson, the rookie, for a 15-yard touchdown pass to win 31-30 to with 22 seconds left. Just incredible, man. And also, Josh, after the game or after the touchdown, a fan threw a bottle at uh, the uh, Browns owner and got kicked out of the stadium, too. Yeah, uh, and I think he got yeah he got arrested, and they're going to ban him for, for life. Mm-hmm. Listen, the Browns fans, they are some of the most passionate, loyal fans in sports, dude. Yes, sir. And that was a tough loss last week. You know, Jacoby Brissett did pretty well, 229 yards and a touchdown. Amari Cooper. Hey, yeah. nine receptions for over 100 yards and a touchdown. Chubb went off with three touchdowns to go with um, 87 yards. Hunt had 58 himself. Brissett had 43 yards on the ground. 184 yards total rushing last week. Beautiful. Now for the Steelers, they're coming off of a loss to the New England Patriots at home. You know, they're a tough team at home, but the offensive line wasn't very good. Trubisky got sacked three times. He had only 168 yards in that game, a touchdown and a pick. Najee Harris only had 49 yards. I know he wasn't 100%. Yeah. And, you know, the the Patriots offense, they actually played pretty good. Mac Jones didn't do too bad. Nelson Aguilar, over 100 yards and a yep. touchdown. Jacoby mm-hmm. Myers, he had nine receptions for 95 yards. Yep. Damian Harris had a good game. The Patriots offense did enough, and they played pretty good defense to get the, the victory on the road. I so can't... now. So now they're here facing off against each other. And what's the injury report on this game? So for the Browns, Miles Garrett did sustain an injury. He is questionable for this game, but he did not practice today, so he might not play, guys. Jadavion Clowney is out. And then their guard, Joe Benetino, sorry I mispronounced that, and Jack Coughlin are both questionable as well at this point. So... That that's some pretty significant injuries. Yes. We'll see if Miles Garrett is going to play. I have a feeling that he is going to, but even if he does, there he's going to need some help. Mm-hmm. And if he's out, man, they're really going to need their third round rookie Alex Wright to step up and make some big time plays in the pass rush. And he's been looking pretty damn good in the yeah. first couple of games. He's had a, a batted down pass in each of the first two games. He's been very active. He's flying out there. So this is a big opportunity for the rookie, Alex Wright, for the Cleveland Browns. And like I said, the Pittsburgh Steelers' offensive line isn't all that great. Mm-hmm. The defense for themselves has, hasn't looked all that good last week. The, they couldn't really generate pass rush consistently yeah. against the New England Patriots. Can they do that here against the Browns? On the road with Brissett, who's looking like he's having some connection with Amari Cooper. Yeah. And you know the Browns are going to ground and pound. And yep. I gotta, fe- I gotta figure that the Browns coming mm-hmm. off that loss against the Jets, you you have one or two ways to react to that. Either yep. you fold as a team, or mm-hmm. you rally as a team. Yep. And you're at home. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm gonna take the Browns, Roach. I'm going to take the Browns right here at home. They're going to ground and pound. Like I said, the Pittsburgh Steelers are giving up 125 yards on the ground a game. I'm going to take the Brownies. Yeah, so no TJ Watt, as you guys know. That's the only injury for the Steelers. But I don't care. 
Josh is right. I think the Browns are going to regroup, and they are going to win this game, and I agree, ground and pound until the Steelers are bad and, and great. So give me <laughs> the Browns to win. All right, there we go. We're going with the Browns. Don't bow! Now we head to Soldier Field in Chicago, where the Bears are facing off against the Houston Texans. The Bears are coming off of a loss to the Green Bay Packers on prime time. Our offense didn't look very good. Justin Fields, 7 for 11, 11 passing attempts for 70 yards and an interception. Darnell Mooney, our star wide receiver, has only five targets through two games. And Cole Komet, I, I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. But these are two guys that are supposed to be our most important pieces in the passing game, and they're mm -hmm. barely getting targeted. I mean, Mooney, minus four yards last week, and yeah, zero receptions for Cole Komet, zero targets for Cole Komet, man. What gives? You know, I know Mooney is now the number one guy, so guys are covering him, but mm -hmm. Luke Getz has got to find some creative ways to get our guys involved, especially Darnell Mooney in the passing game. Absolutely. And for Justin Fields. And, and Fields has made some mistakes himself. I mean, he was missing some guys that were open. He needs to not be so hesitant sometimes. Mm -hmm. But one thing that has been clicking for us is our run game. Mm. David Montgomery sure. came alive last week, 122 yards on the ground against them cheeseheads. Mm -hmm. Khalil Herbert looked fine, too, when yep. he had the ball. And our defense last week. I was pretty disappointed with how we played for – majority of that game the lack of tackling aaron yeah. uh, uh aaron jones and dylan were carving us up especially aaron jones mm -hmm. raquan smith didn't have that great of a game so we're, we're now back here in chicago we're looking to bounce back and we're going yep. up against a houston texas team that hasn't won a game yet so far mm -hmm. you know they've only lost one game coming off yep. of a loss to the denver broncos but mm -hmm. this texas team they, they've been competing in these games I, I've really admired and have been impressive how they've been competing defensively. Lovey yep. Smith is a very you know good coach. He knows us very well. He knows this yep. organization. And Damian Pierce, he got the carries. Finally yes. over Al, uh, Alex Bur uh, uh, Spurkhead. Yeah, I, that's got to continue. Levy Smith did say he wants to get Pierce more involved, and that's good to see he gets that going. Hopefully he gets even more against your Bears, Josh. So here's what I'm seeing going down in this game. Mm -hmm. I think both defenses are going to be making some plays, right? It's all mm -hmm. going to come down to Davis Mills, Justin Fields, who's going to yep. you know, take more opportunities in this game. When mm -hmm. I look at the Houston Texans, they're giving up, you know, they're 31st in total yards allowed. So this is a yes. game that maybe Luke Getze could try to figure out some things yeah. with Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney and get something going mm -hmm. there. And even if that's working, or if it's not working, regardless, we need to run the ball as yes. well quite a bit because the Houston Texans do not do well against the run, the 30th against the run. Ooh. We're not very good either, but yeah. I like our rushing attack better than theirs. Absolutely. So I'm going to have the Chicago Bears winning this game. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited for this. This should be a fun one, but I'm also going to go – the Bears, look for Montgomery and Herbert to just eat up. You guys take away the time of possession and give me Chicago to win this game, baby. All right. We're both going with the Bears. Right. Bear down in the chat, baby. Where my Bears fans at? To Nashville, the Music City, where the 0-2 Titans coming off an ugly loss to the Buffalo Bills oh, oh, oh. are taking on the Raiders, who are also 0-2 because they had to blow the lead to the Cardinals. They had them dead to rights, man. I, I don't understand what they were thinking at overtime, Josh. I don't get it. I mean, yeah. So, first off, they let Kyler Murray come back on them yep. to send it to overtime. Mm -hmm. And then when it does, the Cardinals have the ball first. Mm -hmm. The Raiders get a stop. And yep. then when the Raiders have it on offense, they get down to the Arizona's 39-yard line. Yep. It's first and 10. And what do they do? They pass out of the shotgun, Derek Carr, and he almost throws a damn pick. I couldn't believe they were throwing right there. They were just yards away from field goal range, right? Yep. And then after that, he throws the ball again, this time to Renfro, and he fumbles it. The and defense picks it up. It was Byron Murphy mm -hmm. and runs it back 59 yards for a touchdown in the victory. Raiders, that was tough. 
Dude, you have Daniel Carlson, arguably the best kicker behind Justin Tucker, who's made 28 straight field goals. Put it in his arm, or his leg, I should say. Now, for the Tennessee Titans, yeah, like I said, they're 0-2. They're coming off a tough loss to the Buffalo Bills. I mean, that's not entirely surprising. Yeah. But one thing that we're, we're really starting to see here is that they are missing A.J. Brown completely. They don't have A.J. Brown, so teams are stacking the box, and mm-hmm. Derrick Henry is not running efficient at all. He has 13 attempts for 25 yards oh. last week. He averaged 1.9 yards a carry, and he's Dude. only averaging 3.1 yards through two games. That's brutal, man. I mean, he's lucky he had the touchdown last week. Otherwise, he'd be nothing on the season, man. I, I mean, they're, they're not afraid of Tannehill. They're not afraid they're of not. him throwing the ball to guys like Traylon Burks, a rookie, mm-hmm. and Robert Woods. Words. So they're stacking the box on the yep. Titans, and they're just a mess offensively. So what do you got here with these two teams facing off? So for the injury report for this, Hunter Rinfo, who had that fumble, is in concussion protocol. We'll see if he plays. For okay. the Titans, they are might be without uh, uh, offensive lineman Taylor Lewan, who had a knee injury. That's right. But good for them. Bud Dupree, who left with an injury, has a good chance to play. But it doesn't matter who's playing for the Titans here, Josh. They are, I'm sorry, they're a terrible team. I think Malik Wills maybe has to take over here even soon. The Raiders have a good chance to go in and make a statement. Be like, hey, you know what? These two weeks, they were flukes. We're back. We're going to make a statement. And the Raiders will win. The Raiders are going to win. Okay. I have the Raiders winning as well. I mean, the Tennessee Titans, they can get beat throughout the uh, through, through through the air, mm-hmm. but they're also giving up 169 yards on the ground a game. Yes. So I want to see Josh Jacobs yes. get something going here. I yes. think the Raiders could beat them in several ways, and they mm-hmm. do get the job done. Tennessee doesn't have enough offense to keep up with the Raiders, I don't think. So give me the Raiders. All right, Raiders. To the nap town. The Indianapolis Colts hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. Roach, right off the bat, I need to know the injury report so far for the Colts because they had a bunch of guys out last week. Yeah, so Shaq Leonard, he's still crushable, guys. We don't know if he's going to be making his debut. At Wait. this moment, he's still crushable. Michael Pittman, at this very moment, looks like he's going to play Josh. They missed him last week. That is Hughes, and rookie wide receiver Alec Pierce is still in concussion protocol at this moment, so we're not sure about him. Yeah, I mean, they need to get some help out there for Matt Ryan, who looked pretty rough last week. Three (laughs) interceptions against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Colts got shut out in Jacksonville. Jonathan Taylor, he didn't get going on the ground either. Only nine Uh, carries or 54 yards. It was rough for them. For the Chiefs, though, mm -hmm. impressive win last week against the Chargers. You know, their offense did a good job, you know, but Mm -hmm. their defense. I want to give a lot of love to their defense. They were really looking good. Uh, They had a couple of sacks. They had that pick six on on Justin Herbert. Shout out to Jalen Watson for getting that interception Mm -hmm. and taking it to the house. And also credit to the offensive line, only allowing one sack to Patrick Mahomes. And this is the Chargers with Bosa and Khalil Mack. Mack. Yep. Offensive line and defense did a really good job in that game. Their defense is really impressing me. I was not high on their defense this year, but man, Josh, when we were streaming that game, their defense is good, man. Edward Hitzel, Edward Hilaire continues to impress yes, through two games. I'm going to take the Chiefs here. We know okay. what the Chiefs are going to do. We know mm-hmm. th- what they're capable of offensively. Defensively, they're going to continue to look better, in my opinion. Yep. The Indianapolis Colts, they're still trying to figure this out, and they're still trying to get healthy. Yeah, even on the road. I'm going to take the Chiefs. Yeah, man. Now, who knows? Maybe the Colts surprises Josh to win this game. I would stay away from them and eliminate it, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm going Kansas City. They're just way too much, especially if Shaq Leonard doesn't play, man. No defense is going to lock down if somebody like Pittman and Pierce don't play. Give me Kansas City, baby. They are on a roll to begin this season. You're going to do it, aren't you? Indianapolis. Colts. Oh. You're going to do it. We're going to tank you to win. (laughs) And we're going to think it's going to be a pretty easy win for the Kansas Mm -hmm. City Chiefs, right? Yep. Even if you guys were healthy, the Chiefs should still win this game. Mm Mm-hmm. But you're going to do it, aren't you? Don't do it, Chad. You pick them. You Colts always do this to me every freaking year. You're so hard 
to fucking try to figure out sometimes. Mm -hmm. When I think you're going to win, you lose. And right when I think you're going to absolutely shit the bed, you're going to win. You're going to win, aren't you? Somehow, you're going to do it. And just piss me off. I could see it happening. To go 1-1-1 one, one, and one and beat Patrick Mahomes just, just for you, I could see it happening. All right. Chiefs fans, come on. You got to beat the Colts. But Colts fans, hey, listen. Honestly, best of luck, you guys. Yep. And uh, hopefully you guys get healthy, too. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see Shaq Leonard out there. Me too, right. man. To South Beach we go, Rocha. Yes, where the Miami Dolphins are taking on the Buffalo Bills. Wait, it's Buffalo Bills. Of course. But, dude, this is going to be the game of the week. AFC East Divisional Matchup Throwdown Showdown. Yes, Dolphins, Bills, the only two teams facing off in Week 3 that are undefeated. Dude, that's awesome. That shows how much competition there is in the NFL, man. Last week, Dolphins coming off that amazing come-from-behind victory on the road. Tua leading them to victory down by three touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, 190 yards, two tutties. Jalen Waddle, 171 yards, two tutties. Yeah, man, two ended up with 469 yards and six touchdowns. Incredible. And give credit to that defense, man. They stepped up when they had to. They only allowed the Baltimore Ravens to score 10 points in the second half and only three in the clutch quarter. So the defense do. was there as well, so give them credit. Sure. Now, for the Buffalo Bills, they're coming off of a dominating performance against the Tennessee Titans, who only scored seven points in the first quarter early and then never scored again. Buffalo. Rocha, Just, yes, sir. Bills, and the Dolphins are the best test for each other right now. Mm -hmm. The Dolphins are going up against a Bills team that's got a great defense and a great yep. offense. Because Miami, in week one, they went up against a pretty decent defense, but mm -hmm. a horrible offense. Yep. And then they went up against a great offense with Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, but a bad defense yep. that completely collapsed late in the game. So, great test for Tua and the Dolphins, for real. Yeah, man, I'm excited for this game. Josh, uh, for the injuries here, Ed Oliver, who did not play Monday, he is questionable. He could play. Dave Jackson, who we saw got into that ambulance. Now he has been released from the hospital, but he's still being evaluated. Gabe Davis, the mm. big name in this game, is questionable with an mm. ankle injury, but he could play. Also, Micah Hyde, questionable with neck injury. For the Miami Dolphins, Josh, starting right tackle Austin Jackson is placed on the IR with an ankle injury, so they are going to be down at offense alignment in this game. Okay. And for my for my pick, Josh, I'm feeling giddy, bro. I'm going to go the Miami Dolphins to beat the Buffalo Bills. Fins up. Where, where are they at? Fins up, man. Mike uh, Mike McDaniels, I love what he's doing. Tua, Jalen Waddle, and T Tyreek Hill are going to continue to roll with their offense. Defense steps up. Give me Miami, baby. Okay. You're going with the fence. I like it. I like it. Sir? I'm going to take the Bills Mafia right here on the road. Josh Allen is someone who can kill you through the air and on the ground. And that's what Lamar Jackson had success with against Miami in that game. 318 yards through the air with three touchdowns passing and then 119 yards on the ground with a rushing touchdown. Okay. Allen, his connection right now with Stephon Diggs is absolutely phenomenal. It's Money. astronomical. Money. So, like I said, it's a great test for the Miami Dolphins. The offensive line, they're gonna do they're gonna have to do a great job protecting Tua from guys like Vaughn Miller. Matt Milano making some big plays through the first yep. two weeks as well. Shout out to him. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the Buffalo Bills to say, you know what? You guys are looking damn good, but not yet. Maybe okay. later in the year, but not yeah. I'm gonna okay. go with the road victory here for the Bills. Hey, man, either way you see it's a 50-50 game. It's going to be exciting, Josh. What you guys got? This is a close one. Can't wait. To Minnesota, where the Vikings are hosting the Detroit Lions. Vikings are six-point favorites here at home, coming off of a loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Detroit Lions getting their first victory on the season last week against the Washington Commanders. 
Yeah, man, for the Vikings. Like, what team are we going to see this week? They had a great week one and a terrible week last week. Which one's going to show up? Exactly. In week one, they held the Packers to seven points. And then in week two, they only scored seven points against the Eagles, who shut them down. Cousins looked like his old self on primetime, throwing three picks. I mean, horrible passes, man. Justin Jefferson, 12 targets, six receptions for 48 yards. They did an amazing job on him. But for the Detroit Lions, they had a good win against the Washington Commanders, who they shut out in the first half. They didn't allow them to score. But in the second half, then Washington starts coming back, and they score 27 points to come from behind and make things a little bit more interesting. Amon Ross St. Brown, this dude is him, as the kids say. Oh, Nine receptions, 116 yards, and two touchdowns last week. Credit to Jared Goff. Four tutties last week as well. He's been looking pretty decent. This is going to be an interesting matchup because the Detroit Lions are going to compete. They're going to fight all the way to the end. And Minnesota, they got to regain their identity again. And when you're the Minnesota Vikings and you're looking at the Detroit Lions secondary, you see that Curtis Samuel last week had seven receptions for 78 yards and a touchdown. You're thinking, okay, Justin Jefferson is going to come back and try to make a big statement here against the divisional rival. Yep. But, Rocha, what do you think? Yeah, man, this is going to be fun. It's going to be a high-scoring affair. It's going to come down to this, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, Harrison Smith is in concussion protocol at the moment, so that could be huge for the Lions. It's going to come down who's going to win. Is it Dalvin Cook or DeAndre Swift going to have the better game? I'm going to go in a toss-up, Minnesota and Dalvin Cook to win in a high-scoring affair, but I'm not confident in this pick. They're both giving up a whole lot of rushing yards. 137 yeah. for Minnesota, 152 yards a game for the Detroit Lions. But the Lions are averaging 186 yards a game on the ground, whereas the Minnesota Vikings, yeah. eh, only 94 in mm-hmm. comparison. So is Dalvin Cook going to get going in this game? I mean, the stats say he should, mm-hmm. but that's that remains to be seen. I think this game comes down to the end. Yeah. I'm going to go with Minnesota, okay. and I'm not feeling all that great about it. Agreed. Detroit's looking really good, and I have a lot, a whole lot of respect for them. But yep. I'm going to go with the purple people fuckers, though. I, I like it, man. Let's go. All right. Now to New England, where the Patriots are one-on-one, taking on the Baltimore Ravens, who are coming off that loss against the Miami Dolphins at home while they were up by three touchdowns. Just brutal. In New England Patriots, they had a victory against the Pittsburgh mm-hmm. Steelers last week. Jacoby Myers and Nelson Aguilar had great games against yep. Pittsburgh. They did a good job protecting Mac Jones in that game as well. Mm-hmm. The Ravens' defense looking really oh. suspect through the first two games. And I'm really surprised by that because I felt like this defense was going to be a lot more better than this going into the year. They're very talented, but man, they're just getting gashed up, dude. Yeah, you you kept talking about how good the defense is gonna be. They they you know they're coming off a lot of injuries last year, so maybe it's just gonna take time for this defense yeah. to gel. Sure. Yeah, I mean, what do you got? So in this game, Josh J.K. Dobbins, he remains week to week, but he could play in this game, which would be huge. Oh, I hope. Great. I, I hope he plays. Devin Duvernay is in concussion protocol at this moment. We'll see how that goes. And then Ronnie Stanley is still questionable. He missed the last uh, first two games of the season. For the Patriots, Kyle Duggar, safety. So he could be lost in their defense this uh, week. For in this game, man, listen, you guys know I'm not high in the Patriots. So I'm going to go just J.K. Dubbins or not. I think Lamar Jackson comes out, plays well. And I think the Ravens could easily beat the Patriots here. I'm going to go with the Ravens as well. But I'm a little bit skeptical on this one. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. The reason why is because I mean that, that defense in the passing game, they're allowing almost 400 yards a game. Wow. What the hell is that? Oh. And I'm not saying Mac Jones is going to go out there and look like Tom Brady or some shit. Yeah. But if they can protect Mac Jones and he can get Nelson Aguilar and Jacoby Myers going mm-hmm. again, I mean, you know, he, he, he could have a pretty decent day. Maybe just enough, right? Yeah. But I will go Baltimore, and I'm hoping Lamar Jackson just goes evil mode on them and says, fuck it, yeah, and destroys yeah. them. But I'm going to go Baltimore Ravens. Okay. 
New York Jets taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Where are the Jets fans in the chat? You guys are coming off your first victory on the season, and a hell of a victory it was. Come from behind victory on the road against the Browns. Joe Flacco still showing them that he still got it. Dude, it's like Joe Flacco for the 2012 season, man. And Garrett Wilson, Josh, this kid is turning into a stud. He had two touchdowns last week to go with 102 yards. Corey Davis had a touchdown as well with 83. Joe Flacco, man, yeah, four touchdowns last week. They were looking really good. Very poised, man. Very. You got to be proud of that team if you're a Jets fan that they didn't just give up. They fought to the very end, and even though it was improbable, they came back and won. They're going up against the Cincinnati Bengals, who are just so down bad right now. That offensive line looks like it's the worst already through two weeks, and they spent all that money, they spent all that investment on that offensive line in the offseason. 13 sacks on Joe Burrow through two games. Six sacks against the Cowboys last week. Before that, seven sacks allowed against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Joe Burrow is fighting for his life out there. Zach Taylor is a bum of a head coach. He needs to stop calling the plays for the Bengals. They are absolutely in a bad spot with Zach Taylor. He's horrible. Yeah, man, something needs to change out there, whether it's a play calling or something. You got to get right, Bengals. What are you doing? You're the defending AFC champs. Mm -hmm. The Bengals defense, look, they allowed two touchdowns in the first quarter, and then they just allowed two field goals, field goals for the rest of the game. But one mm -hmm. of those field goals was enough to ice it for the Dallas Cowboys to get the Sorry. victory. Look, man, Joe Burrow and this offense is too talented for this. The offensive line needs to get better, get their heads into the game. Zach Taylor needs to drop some of those big-time plays that we were seeing last year to yeah. Jamar Chase. T. Higgins did a fine job last week, mm -hmm. but we need to see those big-time plays, though. Yes, sir, man. So, in this game for injury rise, it's still going to be Joe Flacco. But, Josh, good news, Zach Wilson starting to ramp it up on practice. So, Jets fans, y'all might see him soon, soon here. So, that's really the only injury report, Josh, in this game. We got one in. I am going with – now, don't let me down. This was the game, Josh, that fucked us in the Eliminator last year. Goddamn you, Bengals. Don't let me down this time. I'm having the Bengals bounce back at the first win of the year. But again, Josh, I'm not confident in saying that. Bengals are four-and-a-half favorites here on the road. I will go with the Bengals, mm -hmm. but I don't feel good about it. Just like oh. I said last week when I picked them to win against the Dallas Cowboys. I'll go with the Bengals. Coach, now we go to the worst stadium in football, where the Washington Commanders call home, and they are facing off against the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, undefeated Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, sir, man. This is going to be a fun one, Josh. No Eagles are hurt in this game, so they're going relatively healthy. Meanwhile, Commanders will be without guard. Rush Schwarzer once again. Carson Wentz, Josh, going against his former team here. This is going to be a fun one, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. They're just too good. No matter how good Washington's looked, Eagles have looked better, Josh. The Eagles in week one, the defense, we were like, oh, you know what? Maybe, you know, they're a little suspect because they let the Detroit Lions come all the way back and score a whole bunch of points on them, and it got all interesting. But in week two, they really cleaned all that up. They only allowed the Vikings, who looked incredible week one, only yeah. seven points in week two. Justin Jefferson, only 48 yards in that game. The secondary of the Eagles did a great job. Maddox, Bradbury, Darius Slay, he had that last pick to ice the game. Yeah. The Eagles are looking absolutely incredible. And folks, Jalen Hurts is a damn good quarterback. 331 yards through the air and a touchdown. Had an interception, but also 57 yards on the ground with two rushing touchdowns. Beautiful. Now, this dude's just getting better in my eyes. Yes, sir. I know a lot of Eagle fans were down on him when they drafted him, but, man, he's turning into a really good quarterback. He got Devontae Smith going. 
Yes. He had no receptions in week one. It was all A.J. Brown. But now Devontae Smith is getting going. He had seven receptions for 80 yards. A.J. Brown still had 64 yards himself. Dallas Goddard had 82 yards last week. So they got some pass catches over there. And credit to Miles Sanders, who is having a pretty decent start to the season so far. Yeah, man. Is he back? Is he back this year, Josh? Yeah. I'm loving him so far. Okay, so what I'm looking here in this game is that the Eagles are going to win this, okay. right? But they mm-hmm. can't let up on the Washington Commanders. Yeah, Through two games, they've made it a habit to come back late. Mm-hmm. They scored 14 points in the fourth quarter week one to win against Jacksonville. Yep. They got shut out in the first half against the Detroit Lions, but then they scored 27 points in the second half to make things interesting. So I'm going to go with the Eagles, but watch out. The Commanders, they like to fight. Yes, sir. All right, so we're both unanimous. We're going with the Eagles. Yes, sir. Now to Carolina, where the Panthers are hosting their division rival in the NFC South, the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, man. And in this game, guys, we know the big question mark, Alvin Kamara, who missed last week with a rib injury. He's questionable. But it looks like, Josh, he could return for this game, which would be huge for them, man. Yeah, I would like to see Kamara versus Christian McCaffrey in this one. That'd make it more fun. Yes. But the Carolina Panthers, they haven't lost. They, they haven't won. <laughs> I'm sorry. They haven't won so far this year. They've lost both of their games by three points or less. So they've made these games really, really close. The yep. New Orleans Saints... They were on the verge of losing that game in Atlanta. They came back and won. And then against the Tampa Bay Bucks last week, it was a defensive battle for the most part until they allowed 17 damn points to the Bucks in the fourth quarter. But Jameis Winston, bro, three fucking picks and sacks six times. The Bucks defense is that legit. And you know what, man? The Saints... They got into a fight last week, Lattimore and Mike Evans, and they're both going to be suspended for week uh, three. Yeah, man. They've been beefing since Lattimore came into the league, man. I don't know what these two dudes have, but that was a crazy-ass fight. So, going into this game, you're looking at DJ Moore. He's not going to have Lattimore guarding him. Um, who you have? So, yeah, um... I'm going to roll, Josh. You see, get it rolling, you know, rolling with the Saints. Oh, no, that's marching. Sorry. I'm going to go New Orleans, man. I just think they're the better team here with or without Kamara. I think they bounce back. Jameis is going to have a better game than Baker. So give me New Orleans, man. Uh, I think this could be a really close game as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, who knows? Another three-point game Maybe. and another three-point loss. Mm-hmm. I'll take the Saints over the Panthers. All right, Roach, to SoFi Stadium, where the Chargers are hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Chargers are going to be seven-point favorites here at home. They're coming off of a loss against the Kansas City Chiefs. Herbert, what's the deal with him? So, yeah, it is a fractured rib cartilage. It's not the actual rib. It's the rib cartilage. So, for Josh, he remains day-to-day, and it's just about can he tolerate the pain Honestly, they expect him to play, but at this moment, we'll see. All right. And the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're coming off of a win against the Indianapolis Colts. They shut them out. That is what you want to see when you're the Jacksonville Jaguars looking for your first win. Lawrence had 235 yards, two touchdowns, got sacked zero times, and threw zero picks. James Robinson, he had 23 attempts for 64 yards and a touchdown out, uh, out attempting. ETN, who had yeah. nine for 20 yards, but he did have three receptions for 33 yards. Christian Kirk, though. Dude. Guys, start paying attention to Christian Kirk. Two touchdowns last week. Maybe he's worth the money after all, Josh. Yeah. And also, they picked off Matt Ryan three times. But they're going to have a tougher matchup here, obviously, against the Chargers. And what's going on with Keenan Allen? So Keenan Allen, at this very moment of this recording, guys, is questionable. So there's not much update at the moment for him, Josh. I'm going to take the Chargers. I love what Mike Williams was doing for the most part in that first half against the Kansas City Chiefs. They couldn't guard him. I'm going to go with Big Mike. Gerald Everett looked incredible as well. Palmer, he was looking nice. And Eckler, you're going to get him involved still. Mm -hmm. I think the Chargers still have enough offensively. 
And, of course, defensively, they're going to have a nice day against Duval. I'm going Chargers. Yeah, so I'm going Chargers as well, Justin. In fact, this is my eliminator pick. Along Uh-oh. with Justin Herbert, along with Herbert plays, this is my uh, eliminator pick of the week. I just like the Chargers too much. I think they shut down Trevor Lawrence. Give me the Chargers by a couple possessions. Okay. All right. To the desert we go, Rocha, where yep. the Cardinals are hosting the Los Angeles Rams. You, as a 49ers fan, you are very familiar with these two NFC West teams. Yeah, man. These two teams, man, dude, they go to battle when they faced off. Obviously, they faced off in the playoffs last year. Rams kind of destroyed them. Kyler Murray, man, looking to go X Games mode for the second straight uh Reek and Josh, I know James Carner, the big question mark in this game. Well, listen, here's the deal with him. He most likely mm-hmm. will play in this game depending on so. how practice goes this week. They're still going to be with that one down more. And for the Rams, unfortunately, they placed cornerback uh, Troy Hill on IR, the groin injury, mm. and the center Brian Allen's also out. And Josh, that Rams defense, man, has not looked good lately. I know. Last week against the Falcons, they were up 28-3 to in Atlanta, and they almost blew the 28-3 to lead. Falcons came storming back. Drake London looked incredible. Uh, Rams, I think this is a week that you could make a statement. Even yeah. though the Cardinals had a nice comeback, Kyler Murray looked incredible late in that game, mm-hmm. looking very clutch. But you know what I saw in the Rams last week that really intrigued me? Allen Robinson was getting involved. He had a touchdown last week, folks. Yep. 53 yards on four receptions. Cooper Cup still eight with two tutties and over 100 yards himself. Tyler Higby, he had seven receptions for 71 yards. Akers got a lot of carries, 15 carries to Henderson's 10, even though mm-hmm. Henderson did get the touchdown. I think they're going to start continuing, continually, uh, you know, ease him into the offense. Absolutely. I'm going to take the Rams, but this is going to be a close one, I think. Yeah. I'm also going to go the Rams. I think their defense finally puts it together. They haven't put it together all season the first two weeks. I think they put it together. Now, again, we keep saying this, or at least I keep saying it. It's not a pick I'm confident in with how good the Cardinals looked last week. But Rams, I'm going with y'all this week. All right. Now to Seattle, where the Seahawks are hosting the Atlanta Falcons. The Battle of the Birds. Yep. Falcons are looking for their first victory. Seahawks are 1-1, one one, coming off of a loss against the San Francisco 49ers. And, dude, the Seahawks got smothered defensively by you guys, man. Yeah, we brought them back to rally. Sorry, I got to go a little bit. I told y'all we're bringing you guys back to reality. I told y'all, listen, Geno Smith, he's just not the guy. But he, he was okay. But Seattle's defense... Not looking good. And Josh, the Falcons' offense has actually been pretty decent up to this point. They, they've been competing. Although, Arthur Smith, I would appreciate it if you got Kyle Pitts the ball a little Please. bit more. Only three targets against the Rams last week. And he had seven against the Saints, but four total receptions for 38 yards throughout the season. And I didn't like his answer post game. Where Arthur Smith said, "You know what? This is not fantasy football. We got we, we got to find. We're, we're we're just trying to win games. Win games by getting your best players the ball. Okay. Yeah. I've been saying the same thing about the Chicago Bears to, to Darnell Mooney. You got to find ways to get your guys the damn ball. And you know what, man? In this game, I think that's going to finally happen. You know, maybe maybe defenses start focusing on Drake London now, and that frees up Pitts. Regardless." I think Pitts gets going in this game a little bit more than he has. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the Falcons on the road to get their first victory. (laughs) Do I feel good about it? Hell no. (laughs) But, hey, they almost came back on the Rams. They did it lay down and die. You know, they've been competing Mm -hmm. in their game so far. They probably should have won that week one matchup against the Saints. Yep. I'm going to say they get it done here. Yeah, that's the reason why... Okay, call me biased. I don't Biased! Care. I'm going 
The Atlanta Falcons on the road, and Josh just nailed the reason why I think they're going to win. They almost came back on the Rams. The Rams have such a better defense than the Seahawks. We picked apart that defense last week. Drake London, Kyle Pitts, doesn't matter. Give me the Falcons in ball. But give me the Falcons to beat the Hawks. Kyle! <laughs> Moving on. Tampa Bay hosting Green Bay. Rodgers versus Brady. Rocha, injury report. Injury report. So let's take a look at this. Chris Godwin remains out. He will not be playing in this game. Julio Jones is questionable. He could make a re return. Mm. And this was just added, I think, today as of this recording, Josh. Former Chicago Bear, Akeem Hicks, to the IR with a foot injury. Oh, so that sucks. Shit. For their defense. And also one more, Donovan Smith, who did not play last week. Again, it's more of a pain tolerance for him with CV plays. And for the Packers, David Bacchiotti remains questionable, but he could finally make his season debut. And they could really use him because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a tremendous defense. I mean, that's been their calling card so far, man. They did a great job against the Dallas Cowboys offense. And I, last week against the New Orleans Saints, they've only allowed 13 total points through two damn games. Wow. Right? But yeah. the Packers, they, they, they came back to life against my Chicago Bears. Aaron Jones did an incredible job. They got Dylan, who's also there as well. I mean, Brady versus Rodgers, man. I mean, this is going to be a good test. Both teams have good defenses. Yep. The offensive line is a bit questionable. Whose defense is going to get to who first and more often? This could be a close one, man. And Aaron Rodgers, I think he's, what, one and three versus Tom Brady? Yeah, man. That's, yeah, excluding the championship game a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So he got Oh, man, this is a tough one. But you know what, Josh? I think the Packers ride the momentum against from the Chicago game. And remember, Josh, we talked about it against the Saints. There's no Mike Evans. So they could be without Mike Evans, Chris That's true. Godwin, and maybe Julio Jones. So I think the Packers, with a little bit better weapons, Aaron Rodgers get the best of Tom Brady. I don't like to say this. But give me the cheese heads. Bucks have won the last two meetings. Rodgers is one and three versus Brady. Mm -hmm. Whose pass protection is going to prevail in this one? Uh, I mean, Brady's passing weapons are probably going to be Scotty Miller, Russell Gage, and Bashard Perriman. Yep. But hey, you know what? Rodgers doesn't have a whole lot of you know great wide receivers to throw the ball to either. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The defense is just too damn good. Ten total sacks through ten through two games. Ten. Ten sacks. Four interceptions. I'm going to go with the team that's been playing better defense. Give me the Bucs. Brady gets the better of Rodgers again. Ha, ha, ha. Cheese heads. <laughs> two mile high where the Broncos are hosting Rocha's San Francisco 49ers. Both teams are coming off of their first dubs on the season. Rocha, take it away. All right, well, let's break down this game real quick. Obviously, we'll go to the injury report because both teams are dealing with some injuries. Obviously, the big, biggest injury, Trey Lance out for the year. It's Jimmy G time. Tra uh, Terry on Davis Price, who looked good last week. He is out with a high ankle sprain. But the best news, well, besides the trade news, George Kittle just most likely to make his season debut, baby. Oh. That is huge. He and Jimmy G have great connection. For the Broncos, KJ Hamler, Jerry Judy, and Patrick Sertain all day-to-day, -day, but just all three have really good chances to play. So the big injury concerns for the Broncos are not so big. So that is great for them. They got a couple offensive linemen who might be out. So that's huge for us. You want to know why? Because Nick Bolts is the best damn defensive player in the league. Three sacks for the first couple of games. The 49ers got back on track. They played their style of football last week, whether it was with Trey or Jimmy. And they ran the ball. They played great defense. Locked down. They would have shut out the Seahawks if it wasn't for a goddamn blocked fucking kick. We kicked ass. 
Denver, Josh, on the other hand, they struggled. They struggled mightily against the Texans, man. So, with that being said, <clears throat> you sweat now, over there? You right? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I had the Broncos winning this game in the season prediction video. Okay. But, but ladies and gentlemen, the San Francisco 49ers are going a mile high, and they are beating Russell Wilson, a guy who they can't beat. It's a different era. It's a different year. Different team. Give me the San Francisco 49ers defense to shut down whoever the wide receivers are, and I'm going Niners. Woo! You know what, man? Yes. 49ers country. That's right. Let's I'm going to go with the 49ers empire or the 49er faithful. Faithful. There you go. I'm not going with the Broncos. Listen, I know you got the win last week, but you got it against the Houston Texans and you struggled with that. Nathaniel Hackett is a absolute bum. I could not believe it. Roach, they had, the crowd, had to start counting down the clock. Yeah. For the Denver Broncos because they kept getting delay of game penalties. The clock management, the decision making by Nathaniel Hackett is absolutely atrocious. I just trust the 49ers more. So give me the 49ers to win. Let's go, faithful. Let's go 2 and 1. Jimmy, lead us to victory, baby. Mm -hmm. To Monday Night Football. We have an <laughs> NFC East throwdown. The Cowboys on the road against the Giants. The Giants are undefeated so Bro. far throughout the season. Okay, I Giants, I see you. And how about them Cowboys coming off that win against the Bengals? I said last week I was taking the Bengals, but I wasn't feeling great about it. The Cowboys defense played pretty damn good against Joe Burrow, yep. sacking him six damn times. <laughs> Good job by the Dallas Cowboys, but now they're going up against the undefeated New York Giants. Roach, who you got? Man, oh man, I can't believe we're saying that. The undefeated New York Giants have been 2-0 and on. God knows how long, man. You know, for the Cowboys, uh, Dalton Schultz got injured. Late. Okay. Yeah. Dalton Schultz got injured late in that game. He's got a sprained PCL. We'll see. He couldn't mm. play. Uh, Michael Gallup, they've been waiting for this dude to come back. He is most likely now, at this very moment, he has a good chance at making his season debut. But the bad news, J Javon Curse and Conor McGarvin remain out. For the Giants, they could get both Aziz Ozolare and Kevin uh, Kevon Thibodeau to make their season debut. So already a team whose defense is pretty, pretty good, Josh, could get two of their top pieces back, man. Okay. I... I'm looking for this game. We'll be live streaming it. And jo and Josh? Yes. I'm going to roll with the New York Football Giants to go 3 and oh, I've been so impressed. Now Barkley, he was all right last week. I think he bounces back. He has a good game. Andrew Thomas is turning into that franchise tackle they thought it was going to be. I think he'll be able to stop Micah Parsons. And Giants fans, where y'all at? That's a 3-0 and start, Josh. 3-0 and start for the New York Giants. Okay. And that could very well happen. But that's not what I'm going to go with. Ooh. I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys on Monday Night Football to get the road win. And let me tell you why. Both teams have been playing some pretty good defense, like you said, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Both have only allowed 18 points per game on average allowing very similar yards through the air and on the ground. Yep. But here's the difference. Okay. The Giants have been playing the Tennessee Titans, who are trash, and the Carolina Panthers. True. The Cowboys went up against Tom Brady and the Bucks, and then the Cincinnati Bengals. True. And they have a lot of talent over there. They had Jamar Chase. Great job by Trayvon Diggs. Give this man his respect, y'all. He's doing a damn good job so far this season. And yep. how about Michael Parsons, Defensive Player of the Year candidate right here for me. He's got mm -hmm. four sacks on the season so far. Sheesh. I'm loving how they're playing defense. I can't say it enough. Cooper Rush was very serviceable, 235 yards throwing, had a touchdown, 
through no picks. Hey, Noah Brown had a great game last yeah. week. 91 yards on five receptions, a touchdown. CeeDee Lamb, seven receptions, 75 yards. And Pollard and Zeke, I think, are going to have a damn good game. Pollard's been outpacing Zeke yep. on the ground. His, his average per carry has been better. Pollard's going to be doing a good job. And I think Zeke's going to eventually start getting really going. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys because I think their defense is better. They were going up against better competition. So we're different here. You go yep. to the Giants, I'm going to go with the Cowboys. Okay, man. Wow. We will be live streaming this game, so come hang out with us. We'll see how it all goes down. Yes, that sir. does it for week three picks. The picks. If you guys enjoyed the pick em video, hit that like button. Appreciate everybody who's watching on the premiere. Go subscribe to Rocha. And we'll see you next week on how it all goes down. Good luck, everybody. Let's go, Bears. Nine. That Bears. Niners. That Bears. Niners. That Bears. Bye-bye.